In this video, I'm going to show you some good practices for building um, good multiple regression models. Now, a multiple regression model is where you're using more than one variable to try to predict something. So, for instance, in this example here, we have banking data. Uh, what we're going to try to do is use uh, age, education, income, home value, and wealth to predict average bank balance. So column F here, think of this as being the Y variable we're trying to predict. And these other, what is it, one, two, three, four, five X values that we're going to use to try to predict the Y value. It's called multiple regression, where simple regression would just be using one X variable in order to make the prediction. Now, we have our, um, our add-in installed for data analysis. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to go and select regression. All right, so input Y range that would be this average bank balance. Now we'll use labels so we can select the words here. However, notice that in order uh, to describe these labels we've used two rows, row three and four. If you try to put them both in that confuses Excel. It's looking for only one row for your label. So since all these words are different I can easily just use uh, the word balance there. All right, so I could go and click on balance and drag down. However, I have a very large data set here. And little trick that'll save you a little bit of time. Click on the word at the top there. Now, what you have to do is you kind of have to time this right. You want to do shift on your keyboard. You want to find the word N and END, which is below your home key, and then you want to do a down arrow. Now, you need to select them relatively like at the same time. So I'm going to do that here, shift N down arrow. Oh, there I go. It took me twice to do it. In other words, it's a little bit finicky. Um, if you do shift and then wait a couple seconds and end and wait a couple seconds and then the down arrow it often won't work so you might have to play with it a bit it can be a little bit sensitive but that was uh, a little easier than selecting and then dragging all the way down and it'd be much better if instead of having 106 rows we had 10,000 rows now for the input x range I'm going to choose all five of these explanatory variables. So I'm going to do it the same way. I'm just going to select the first line and again play with the shift and down key. You can actually do like one at a time, shift, then end, then down arrow key. Um, like I said, it just has to be fairly rapid. All right, so we've selected our data for this regression model. We're going to select where we want the output range. I'll just put it starting up here in, uh, in H2. Sometimes I forget to do it, but you need to click in this box before you go and select the cell. And let's do OK for this. And we're going to interpret uh, some of the most important things here from the output. Okay, first off, R squared. R squared here is, notice, uh, about 94.6%. And that's saying that this combination of explanatory variables, X values, explains about 94.6% of the variation in average bank balance. So it's a percentage of the explanation provided by these here to protect your average bank balance. So that's pretty good. Now we're going to look at significance F. Uh, this is actually an extremely small number because E-59 means you'd move the decimal point 
59 places to the left. So this is virtually zero, this number here. Now, what the F test is saying, what it's testing is, are any of these five explanatory variables significant? It shouldn't surprise us that, that the answer is yes. So the F test doesn't tell you that these are all good as far as explaining average bank balance. It just says at least one of them is good. You know, so it's a very general sort of test. Now to look more specifically at age, education, income, home value, and wealth, we would be looking at the p-values that are associated with them. If you're a little rusty with statistics, when you test one at a time, it's called the t-test, whereas the f tests them like all lumped together. All right, so, you know, we're not really worried about the actual value of f or the actual value of t. It's the p-value we want. We want the p-value to be small, and we'll go with the common measure, which is people look for a p-value less than 0.05. So age is real tiny, remember, because that e negative 6. So age is significant. Education, uh, it just just misses, right? It's a little bit of larger than 0.05, so we'll count that as a miss. Income's good. Home value definitely isn't good. Wealth would be good. So basically, uh, education fails by a bit and home value fails by a bit. Now, when we're, when we're doing regression models, um, some people use what's called the principle of parsimony. And just basically, it means we want to use the simplest model that we can. In other words, as few variables as we can that help us make good predictions. And there are different ways to apply that principle, but here's how we're going to do it here. When we see that one or more of our variables is not significant. So let me go and unhighlight these for a minute here. And the ones that fail for significance, as we said, you know, are the education and then the home value, because the p-value is too big for those. Do not, we're going to remove something from our model, but never remove more than one variable at a time. Okay, you'll see why in a minute. So basically, don't get rid of both education and home value. Which is a greater, greater offender? Well, home value, because 0.4 is nowhere even near 0.05. So what we'll do is we'll go back to our model and we'll eliminate home value. So I'll come over here. That'd be column D. Um, I'm just going to go in and delete home value. Okay, move things over. All right. And now what we're going to do is we're going to rerun the regression model, which will now just be using the four uh, x variables instead of five. All right, so let's go back into that. To be careful because everything's moved over, so we're going to have to like reselect things because now what we're trying to predict, the y value, you know, that's in column E now. So again, try to do your, your shift and down key. Okay, doesn't take long to get the hang of that. Selected all of that. And now for the input X range. Um, remember, don't select both rows of the label. You want to make sure you only select one. Okay, shift and down key. We got labels, so we have that checked. Now, we don't want to rewrite this on top of our other output put because it'll be nice to compare. So let's just start it a little bit lower here and click OK. And again, let's just interpret things for practice. Notice that for the F test, the significance is extremely small. 61 decimal places to the left, you know, so I mean virtually indistinguishable from from zero. So that just tells us that of these four explanatory variables, something good is going on there. And now let's look at the four separate 
p-values associated with the t-test. This t-test is just looking at each of these one at a time. Well, notice age is highly significant with that e to the negative 7. Education, which before was not quite significant, now definitely meets the significance level as to income and wealth. So you see how uh, if we had deleted both the education and the home value would have been kind of rushing things a bit. Um, basically, the explanation is sometimes variables may be related to one another. We call that in statistics correlation. So um, it, they can just kind of befuddle your explanation a little bit, stir things up. And that's why uh, we, we only want to get rid of one at a time because getting rid of the one, if there was some relation between them, might then drive up the significance of the other. But anyway... Uh, by the principle of parsimony, uh, we would say that this would be the simplest model. You know that would that would do a satisfactory job. Now, uh, just just for practice, let's take these five coefficients here, and you know that's that's describe what the model is. So uh, it would be y. Our prediction we call y hat. So y hat would equal. Now, if I were using a calculation, doing calculation, I'd want to use, um, you know, these numbers with lots of decimal places. But just just to summarize it here, the equation starts out with the intercept one, two, four, three, two, uh, and and just to make it simple, right now, that's just due to say uh, two decimal places. Okay. Again, I'd want better than that for a calculation. So it starts out with the intercept, and then it would be plus, and it would be the co next coefficient down, 325.07. And we could call that variable like, you know, a for age, or just do x sub 1. It, it doesn't really matter. That's, that's just... Um, Let's just use the words here, you know. So, okay. And then we would have plus, and the next one would be uh, 773.38. Education. And then plus uh, 0.16. times income, and then plus 0.07 uh, times the wealth. And there would be uh, our predictor equation. All right, so when you do multiple regression models, the procedure is, first of all, if you've got lots of x variables, x variables to work with, use them all to predict whatever it is you're trying to predict. If they are all significant, as shown by the p-values, you don't have to look at intercept. You just have to look at the explanatory variables, starting with age. So if those are all statistically significant, that is, the p-values are less than 0.05, you can stop. If not, remove one. If you're good, stop. If not, you know, continue. But when you remove them one at a time, you're always going with the one with the largest p-value at that step. Okay, um, I think that should handle it. Signing out.